the days are warmer, spring is here, shall we make some botanical tags? Today I'm making eight different tags in a vintage botanical style. The colours are just splendid and the process is really relaxing and it's a craft activity that I really enjoy. I'll do the collage on the front of the tags all step by step so that you can do it too. And I'm using lots of book pages to make the base of the tags, which is it's fun, it's an affordable project and it's really rather addictive. This project is for you if you're a beginner, but the scope for adapting the tags and for adding your own style is there. So it's also for you if you're more advanced. Hello, it's Joey turning book pages into botanical tags, a relaxing and easy DIY. I brought you over to my desk so that I can show you all of the lovely supplies that I'm using today. And these are the tags that I'm making. So I've just set a few of them down here to give you an idea. I've got some gorgeous images on them and a background of this beautiful natural greens, varied greens, some grunge, just lots of fun putting these together. I said that I was going to use book pages as the base and today I will show you how I make that base, although to be a bit organised and to help us move forwards with this, I have made one up. So this is book pages from just a regular book and I've put some music paper on the top. What I want to show you today is how I get some of these varied greens in the base so that it doesn't all turn just to one colour of brown. So I'm going to have a little play with my watercolour paints and make that up today. When I decorate the tags I'm going to use some lovely stamps. So I've got a few of those. We know we like these postage related stamps and I've got some script. I've got some stunning colours of ink pad to play with, some little labels. The images that really prompted me to have a go at making these tags are from a new set called Botanical Field Journal from Victoria Designs and she very kindly sent them to me and I printed off a few of the pages and just looked at them and it really inspired me to use the images on tags. So these are just some of the pages from the kit and in fact if you're early to watching this video you might find a very generous discount code through a link in my video description box. So I looked at some of these images and aren't they absolutely stunning? So we've got that warmth of green, some fresh green, luscious images. Some of them are large pages. So to begin with I did have a go at making a journal but when I saw some of these other images I just felt I wanted to tear them up and play with them and mix around with some other stamps and ink. So today I'm going to splat my tags with some paint. I might use some other little items like these beautiful butterflies. I'll add some texture with some material to make a maybe a little tab top. And of course I'll be using lots of scraps of paper. I might sew around them just to bring them together using my sewing machine. And what I'm finding really finishes them off is an eyelet at the top. So I recently bought a cropper dial and I'm going to have a play with that. I've been using these rose gold eyelets and little bits of material at the top as a tag, as a tab. So let's go back to the main desk where I can start making the base, putting all of these lovely components together. And I hope you'll maybe get comfortable at your craft desk and craft along with me. Let's make some beautiful tags. The first step is to make the base of these tags and I'm going to make a substrate with book pages like this which is just involving gluing multiple pages together and I've added music pages on top which gives it this delicate crinkly effect but also a little bit of white behind. So they work really well when we come to cut them up into tags and use as background for these beautiful images. I've used this method quite a few times recently, it is rather addictive. It's great for making other larger journaling cards. I used it to make the tags on the front of a, a junk journal that I put together recently and I also used it to make a larger cover for a folio. So the method I'm going to show you, which I'll work through quite quickly, has got lots of uses 
feel free to play with it, adapt it, and indeed if you can, show me pictures of anything you make. So these are some of the things that you can adapt it for, and as I say, it's just really easy. So the first thing we need is just rather a lot of book pages and some glue. So let's gather those book pages and glue them together, and I'm using my green board here, my little surface protector cutting mat, to give me some help today to get a size and shape that's tidy enough but also actually quite economical. So it allows me to create the substrate with a size that then gets the most number of tags out of it. When I started putting these together, let's use a relatively liquid glue, when I started putting these together I was not smart enough to realise that at the end of it when I cut it up I would have just a little bit of a narrow strip so if I go all the way across and actually beyond the lines I get to a size in centimetres that when it's divided up creates an even number of tags of a sufficient width so depending on what size you're going to make them my suggestion is think ahead if you want to use all of your substrate for making into either tags or journaling cards and not have any left over. The joy of having some left over is you then get to have some other little items that you can use in your projects. So we are going to put together a quick base by using, I like to use a relatively matte book page because it seems to absorb the glue and it feels really nice so it allows me to use up some of my book pages it glues together well but whatever you've got I think should work particularly if we're going to add some really pretty music sheet paper on the top after so the method here is with rather no particular science just overlapping a bit each time add your various layers of book page and I think it's actually really good if you can be a little bit random so that we don't have all uprights and all horizontals so we don't have all portrait and landscape make it a little bit mixed up because I think that helps with the strength of putting these book pages together and that was a little bit daft because I put glue all over so it's obviously going to go on my mat so what I'll do with that is just start my second layer Okay, so we're making progress with getting that first layer down. I do sometimes find that when I've done a, a layer, there's a little bit of page sticking to the mat, but it tears off and it washes off, so... We don't mind, do we? We don't mind a little bit of a random walk and the odd mistake as we, we play with our book pages and make things. I'm trying to get a couple of layers at least, and in some places there may be three layers. That's okay. The limitation on this, so the reason I'm choosing two or three layers, is when I have made these tags, I want them to be capable of going through a sewing machine. So I don't want all of the layers and anything that comes on top to be so thick that I can't do that. Maybe there? What do you think? Should we go there? Should we go there? Let's go down over here. I want it to have that crunchy, I'm going to say, meal fay effect. That multiple layers feeling which really comes together when we sew it together and that adds strength. So two to three layers is about enough to get the thickness and robustness, that beautiful paper feel and not too much if we want to add a run of sewing of stitches around the edge at the end. I have got in my craft room here about seven different bases all made up just because, just because, just because when I'm in the mood and when I don't want to think particularly and I don't want anything complicated which can be quite a lot of the time I put some of these together and then sometimes I'll think I just feel like painting on them and sometimes that painting might be splatting, it might be that I want to stamp on them straight away, 
it might be that I want to collage. But I think having some of those bases put together is just a fantastic way of allowing your creativity to flourish and flare when you sit at your craft desk because the base is already made. With this music paper, first of all it's nice and thin, which I like, lovely. I don't mind if, as I fill in here, some of the pieces are just sitting on their side. I don't mind if it's not upright, that's almost part of the extra creative flair. It's just feeling good. There we go, it's stuck to my mat. Woohoo! Oh, perfect, it peeled off. Right, let's carry on. I think if you're good at wallpapering, you'd be excellent at this. Because it's about filling in. In fact, we don't need to be as neat as if you're doing wallpapering a wall. Not that I've ever done it, but don't tell anyone. Super quick, super satisfying, gorgeous music paper. I'm already inspired about what we're going to put on these and play with. There we go. So that is the base. It's about 45 centimetres, which gives me enough width for multiple tags and two tags up here. So here's one with a nice little botanical item. Yeah, just over seven width, seven centimetres width, which means I'll get quite a few that way and two up there. So with this, the ideal scenario is let it dry, maybe just check that all of the edges are down and then add the paint. So what I'm going to do is add the paint, show you what to do, and then I can use the dried one that I've already made. So the effect I want to achieve today in the base is this mottling. And I feel like this is just my interpretation of that natural botanical feel. I've got lots of different greens in here, including some with a bit of a blue hue. I've got some beautiful yellows, yellow ochres blended in. And I've also splatted it with both gold and black, just to allow a little bit of point of detail as well as the colour. I've made one with some old diary pages. This was more of a stroke effect and I mixed this one with blue just to give you an idea of some different backgrounds that you might want to add. And it's really just a little bit of a continuation of the botanical one that I did with leaves just swooshing, adding some sweeps and some little leaves and giving them definition with a black pen. These were the ones that I used as background to my bird journaling cards. But I've also been playing using the same technique with making a rainbow substrate and adding some umbrellas on that. So really, it's just up to you what you want to add as background to your substrate. Today I'll add this, it's the easiest thing to do. I'm going to use my Arteza watercolour palette and then I'm just going to add a little bit of strong colour from a gold gouache tube of paint, again my Arteza paints. Um, I thought about using a brown, I think the black probably works best. So I've got my grungy palette here that I've used to splosh those on. So the first thing I'm going to do is wet this and I'm going to use my spray bottle that does have mica in it. So this has got a couple of different colours of my mica powder in and water. And I add about three teeny tiny spoons that come with the set of mica and take it to about an inch and a half up in this bottle. And what this allows me to do is add colour from the palette of watercolour but not have to mix up the colours on the substrate so it prevents it from all going into one common colour of brownie green. I've got a large brush, quite large, it's the largest one I've got really, quite soft and my water and I'm going to start just adding colour to my base. So I'm wetting the brush and just going to start putting blobs of colour on and I'm using these sumptuous yellows and greens and the key that I've found 
is to not swipe your brush. Do not go across, up and down, or if you're left-handed, that way. Don't go up and down, but rather dip into the colour and add just from the side of the brush as much of this colour as you want in different places. And if you're feeling really light green, dip into the light green, mix that around, keep adding the water. You can make it as pigmented as you like. I quite like the effect of some of the white behind coming through, but the, the essence here is adding the colour so that it doesn't run into and get completely mixed on the paper with all the other shades. So it's just something a little bit different from what I've done before and it was something I felt I thought would work really well with those images, those botanical images in the Victoria Designs kit. So something that emulates some of that spring that's coming, that tips in, that says hello every now and again in England and then disappears. So where has it gone? We've had some lovely days and then we've had some wet days, hence my umbrella and rainbow substrate. But mostly I feel that we're heading in the right direction and I feel that botanical tags are just one of those most usable items in our junk journals. There's always something that we can add them to. So if you want to make a stock of these, I think this is a great way of getting some supplies together. And the Arteza paints are good for lifting quite a lot of pigment off with not too much effort, which is one of the reasons I like them. All the supplies that I use I try to link in the description box below. So the key is fill your page as much as you want, maybe leave some gaps between the colours. Step back every now and again and see have you got enough green, have you got what you want. Keep your brush wet. Ideally use a soft brush, I think that's that's helpful too. And keep the little pans of colour in your palette plenty wet. So you can see it's building up very quickly and I'm intentionally leaving space behind the dips and the dabs so that they don't all run into each other. It's all a bit random which particular shade of green I dip into, which makes it all the more fun. And I have no doubt I'm going to be making quite a lot of these with those lovely botanical images that we're going to play with shortly. There we go, up to the edge. And I've managed to do it without it all turning into one common shade of green. So are you crafting along with me? Let me know. Are you creating your substrate and adding some colour? Don't do too much, Joey. There is a time to stop, even though I don't want to. So there is a base of colour. And while it's wet, I'm also going to add some splats. So my splat colours of choice are gold and there's my black, noir, in gouache because it comes out more pigmented. It seems to be easy to get those intense little dots. Start with the gold. So quite liquidy. Have a pair of scissors. That's easy and use it to knock on just something firm and I can see some gorgeous blobs of gold. Yummy. The other way, which is a little bit more risky, is a bit of a, a swipey flick. You'll no doubt have your own technique and this always means you're at risk of other things on your desk getting splattered, like my sewing machine was the other day. I'm going to do the same thing with my black. Wash my brush, get some liquid. Now I want definition with my black so I'm not going to have it quite as liquid. Let's go for that. And something about those deep dark black splats that contrast really well, not only with the gold, but the greens behind. And I'm getting variety. Oh yes. Do we have some of the swipe? Oh. Wonder how much my desk is getting it too. 
Right, I'm happy with that. I'll show you what I've got. Very relaxing, which I think is one of the benefits of making botanical tags. So I'm going to cut up the base and this is the base that I painted yesterday and I just really like how these turn out and it makes a super backdrop for our tags. I'm going to cut tags to be just over 7 centimetres in width and 14 centimetres in height so that I get a row of them across here and a row of them out across here. So big Fiskars paper trimmer here we come and I will just cut these down into my seven and a bits. I think my last one has come out a little bit fatter but the rest of them look tag shaped and sized so I am going to halve these at 14 just got a bit of extra on this one I feel there we go so lots of bases let's get on with embellishing them I'm going to start by cutting the corners off my tags which is really easy to do I like to do about a two centimeter by two centimeter corner just seems to work on lots of different sizes of tag. So I'll do one and then I'll use that as my model to just make the rest. It's very quick and easy. I can probably do two at once like that and at this point you start to really feel the benefit of those multiple layers of book page that we've glued together and there is some air between the pages. They're not completely perfectly stuck together but that's part of the beauty, it's the feel of some of these tags, the feel of that substrate, the combination with the paint, which does seem to add a little extra. And they will feel a bit thicker and stronger when we've added the images and then sewn around. If you don't have a sewing machine, you can make sure that you glue these well and then add faux stitching, which would be absolutely fine and would still work really, really well with the images and I think the, the sewing that I add or faux stitching if you want to do that of a mixture of running stitch and just a zigzag also works well with the images and this botanical feel but any style of stitch, any style of faux stitch, whatever mood you're in let's just do it because that's what it's all about isn't it, it's the process right we are motoring, let's start with a tag and start putting some together. I think I'll start with this gorgeous little botanical and orange item. So let's find that in here. So here we are. Let's give this a bit of a trim out. Part of the fun is cutting these up. Take a tag. What I definitely need to do is get some book page on here. This is really delicate actually. So I want some book page across. And I really like the fact that it's come on the slant. Yes. I'll work with my print, I think, today. Get some glue on there. Every time we make things, and certainly in my craft room, it never turns out like the one I've already made. They're all really different. I'm going to tear off at the sides. I don't feel like having those cut. And then I'm simply going to combine my image here with a label somewhere. I've got a few labels to choose from. Let's have one. Yeah, I think I'll have one coming down here because I've put this a bit higher up, so I'll have a label to the left. I think it's always better to do what your eye says works at the time than try to repeat, because if you put something in a different place and then you add something else, 
it might not work. So go with your gut feel, go with your instinct. So I'm merely going to have on this one three items. One, two, three. This is my key focal point. Gorgeous, gorgeous colours, gorgeous image. I absolutely love these botanical browns and neutrals on the backdrop of that green. I will add something special. So let's have some zigzag. That does still work. Not all of it. I don't want it to be too heavy. A bit there. Something up there. Why not? This one can have a little bit of a tab. One old, I think it was a tablecloth that I draped in and let sit in some paint. I think it was fabric paint and it does have a little bit of a sparkle to this. But it's nice and lightweight. I think that can go up there. Maybe make it a bit narrower. You can get lost in making these. I think it's such a great way of relaxing. I'm merely going to glue this to get it on. I don't work with fabric very much and I do want to learn to do it. I'm really excited about expanding the number of different materials that I use in my craft and making life continue to be interesting and motivating as I have a go at making things. So if you've got suggestions for different materials that you haven't seen me use and you think I should have a go at, definitely leave me a comment down below and give me any of your ideas. I would definitely love to know. So there's number one. Let's put that on the side. Let's have a go at another one. Let's have a look at an image. That's one of the big pages. That's a big page. How about this one down here? Let's do something with that. Just cut that out. And I'll start with some book page again. Cross. Maybe a piece that's a little bit straighter. Yeah, I do want to. Ooh. I'll have a fatter one. Bigger piece that will work, like that. Go a bit lower this time. That on. No. Don't cut it, Joey. Tear it, because that's the feel that I want. I'm going to have some of this on top of here. Let's just take it down. I can still have... I quite like that with the bit sticking out. And don't worry that these images are non-grungy, as in the tag substrate and the book pages feel very botanical but these are just printed on copy paper at the moment. We're going to add something on the top. Got some material. That's something across here. Really like the sense of texture. Will my scissors go through it? Yes. Oh yes. Like that. I think the print is quite necessary, quite a stiff glue, quite like that. Love the texture, so we'll cut that down. I think I'll add something down here, something small down there. What do we think? Do not detach. Now I like this, I like the text. The reason I wouldn't use that on here is because the background is very pale and so is the background here, this border. So I want something that's got contrast that makes us see the definition, that's more like it, of what's in the label. So that can go on there. That one works well. 
because I've got a boundary on the label and some nice text. All of these I'll sew and add an eyelet and some hessian. So that's number two. Let's have a look. I don't think I'm going to use the big pages, but let's see what else we've got. I think I'll use this little chap down here. And this little cone. Which is a bit more autumnal, isn't it, than spring? Maybe. What do you think? And I'm happy with going around it and leaving a little bit of a border, particularly because we're going to add a little bit of grunge effect on top of all of these elements that we add to the tags. That makes it probably a little bit easier as I cut out the images. I'm not going all the way to the edge of the image, which is fine. Apart from these straight lines where obviously I'm going to cut quite neatly. I've tidied my desk so that I can think, so that helps a little bit. I'm just going to fold over the edge of this and make a bit of a pocket on here and even though this is going to be a bit too wide it's absolutely fine, I'm going to sew it on. So fold the edges just like that and I'm going to have a pocket at the bottom of my tag. Just trim that down a little bit so that I can't see the white behind. I will glue that, put a glue on there, and then I can stick that on the bottom like that. Perfect! So this will be a pocket on a tag. There we go, and I think I'll have my lovely little cone inside and maybe a, a tag behind, I like that. Yep. Yeah. Get my little label. Little label in there. And we'll have this sitting inside too. Love it. Maybe go a bit higher. Should we go there? You can have a bit of washi at the top. Let's just have that there. A bit of washi, try and get it in the middle. So eyeball that. Number four. Back to our images. What have we got? I really like this. I'd like that to be a dominant feature. I'm going to have that. So that will be right in the centre there, maybe a touch to the right, so I'll have some I'll have some book page up the left. I think I'm happy with it even being upright. May give it a torn edge. That could go on there. I think I'll have it with some of the paper. Reduce some of the blank. It can go there. That will go on. And I'm going to have just something over here. Something bold. A little label behind. That could go there. You can see the word balance. So he can sit on top. I'm going to put it where I can see as much of that word balance as possible. But obviously still overlapping the book page and that label. I think this will really come to life when we add a few splats and some stamping on top. And I think with this one I will have a bit of black and white washi at the top. Really like that. It's the black and whites and the greens. So how many have we done? We've done one, two, three, four so far. 
So I really like this design, which I think is meant to be made into some form of pocket. But I like the dragonflies on the right, and I like the smaller little aquarium here and those flowers. So I think what I'll do, cut the whole thing out, and then I think I'll rip that in half. So we don't need to make out of one of these kits whatever the plan was. We can do whatever we like with the patterns. Just look at what you like and see see what happens. So I think I want something covering about two thirds of the middle here. And I know that I want most of that lovely little aquarium item. So I think I'll start by ripping that down. Put that aside, maybe that can be the next one. I think that can go on there, but I don't want all of this. So I'm just going to take that off and go around it. There we go. I think that can go on there and I'll have an offset, a bit more book page. Let's have another page, gorgeous book page. I like this one, it's really yellowing. I think that can go up there. Let's get, make it a bit tatty at the top. Nice and tatty at the bottom. And that can go on there. It doesn't seem to need much else, does it? Maybe needs something down here. got some space here so I'm just going to add something a bit more. Nothing too competing with the message here with love and best wishes but just something extra down there. Yep, happy with that. Next one, let's have a play with, let's have a play with the remaining piece of our dragonfly. So again I think I'm going to take off the edge so just not very necessary for me. So take off that and that. I'll have some book page down here. So maybe, yeah, I'll keep it upright. Go down there. I think what's nice about the design of these is you've got some vertical components. Get rid of the, the whiteness. So the vertical components contrast with the text of the book page which we can have running in any direction. So I will have this on but I want a bit of a label behind. So does field notes work? Oh yes, love that. Love it. Absolutely love it. That is so pretty. So I can have that there. Nice upright. I'm going to have field notes tucking behind the image but on top of the horizontal bit of book page and I'll have a different sort, no I don't want, I want something gentle, stripy washy, how about that? Gosh there's so much fun just picking up your items and playing, it's so absorbing. Let's have a go at this little sprouting element. Cut that down. Get rid of those. Trying to keep my space nice and tidy. That one works well because I've got this gorgeous yellowing in it. Look at that, how it goes with it. Yum, yum. Love it. I don't want quite so tidy an edge. So I will just get rid of some of it. I like that shape better for the proportion of my tag. I have a horizontal book page. Tends to work with about three elements. So a book page, an image and then a something. I don't even like 
that straight edge. That's better. So I think I'll have that. It says botanical specimen. That's really nice. Yes, we're there. We're there. It's kind of hard to go wrong, isn't it, with such beautiful elements as older paper. These images, little labels, bit of paint. Love it. Absolutely love it. I'm going to take that one all the way to the edge because I've got enough space to sew. This one can just tuck underneath. So you'll see lots of the text on it. Easy. Very nice. Let's be greedy and have one more. There we go. Quite like that. Could do a butterfly. I think I'm going to use this. I'm going to use this one somehow. Let's just cut out this gorgeous image. there, let's bring it down nice and low, and tear off the edge and I'm going to have maybe a label, oh that's lovely, that's lovely, how about that, just go ad hoc, off piste and yumminess happens, that about there, that's about right, I'm going to sit him on it, I'm going to leave it so the wings come up so I can sew underneath, do we think of that? It's tucking out over the edge. I really, really like that. I really like that. Give his legs something to sit on just a little bit extra. So he can have a bit of material at the top. I'll just cut a strip from this, and do something with it. Just a little strip there. Stick that on. Really like this one. It's possibly my favourite. have an eyelet in it. So how many have we got? Let's have a look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ready to add some stamping. I'm going to add some texture, so I've got a few different stamps and I'm using my Ginger Adirondack ink pad. So the first thing I'm going to do is, with some care, choose about where I put some of these text marks. So I might want some to be vertical. I want them to be very light. I don't necessarily want them over the whole of the image and I don't want every image to have this on it either. So another thing I like to do is take the image and place it so I can be a bit careful about where that goes. This one I'll have horizontal so that can go there. I do want something on here. Maybe use a bit more. Maybe have my little sapling here. can have some. Not too much on all of these. So that's enough of the text, I think. Another nice little stamp I've got that I thought would work well is this little pocket watch. I think that as a context is very nice on some of these. Again not too much and certainly quite nice when it's faded. A little bit there. I've got my grungy stamp. This needs a bit more grunge. This is great this one because it's not hugely specific so it does just look like it's got that vintagey botanical feel coming together. We've eradicated that 
copy paper effect that we had with the images which I just printed on 90 GSM copy paper. There we are, I'll use my circular postage mark. Ooh, gentle, just a little bit. Really nice when it's actually faded so I have to be very gentle when I've just inked up the stamp and a little bit of the wiggle. It speeds up doesn't it as you get to this stage. The homework is getting your substrate done which is why I do suggest if you get it done in advance and maybe make up a few that's a really good way of having fun making tags like these. And then the last thing I'm going to do is just put these in a box and add a few more of those gold and black splats. So I'll go away and do that and we'll see where we're at. So this is the box I use. I put lots of my little items in and either spray with my mica spray or go back to using my paint splatting technique. So all I've done is just lay the tags out and dot them over with the gold and black again. And that will dry really quickly. So I'll take them out and we can just finish them off with a little bit of sewing and I'll show you exactly what I do with my sewing. I'm really pleased with the effect we've got now and just to give you a little bit of a peek you can see how the splatting has taken away some of that new sense of paper given it so much more texture and real interest layers so the splats sit on top of our lovely layers of book pages and images. So I'm going to take my sewing machine and go around with running stitch I will go start at the top work round and when I get to the bottom right I add zigzag of course add whatever you want and when I get to the top left I add a little bit so there's just a little bit of interest there so I'll set my machine up and run round the eight tags we've got and then we can add the eyelet and see how they all look so I've sewn around them and I am more than delighted with how they're looking I've got a little bit of zigzag at the bottom right and the top left on every one apart from the one with the pocket that we added and on this one I did zigzag all the way around the base but I made sure that when I was sewing over the pocket and then joining the tag at the back I did that in running stitch because I just think that gives it a little bit of a firmer attachment but with the splats and the sewing I am just over the moon with how these are looking. What do you think? They're just absolutely gorgeous and the, as these come together I think you'll find that you're just absolutely obsessed with making them. What I'm going to do, having punched the hole, is add my eyelet, my set I bought from Amazon. They come in just a mix of colours, rose gold, a gold and a silver. So I'll add a few of those using my cropper dial. I think I'll start with my beautiful I think that's, is that a dragonfly? I don't know. The other thing I'd say is I only have a low cost sewing machine. So my sewing machine cost me £40 from Hobbycraft. I've had it over a year now. I would still class myself as a beginner. But what it has allowed me to do is put these tags together and I don't have a lot of confidence or skill and ability with sewing at all. I don't really have anyone to ask so I'm learning from YouTube. But I have been able to sew around these tags and it's gone through several layers of paper. So even the one that we did as a pocket at the bottom, which remember had fold-ins behind, so that really is multiple layers, probably five or six layers of paper at least, it went through all of those layers no problem. Just add a little rose gold eyelet, make sure my cropper dial is the right way up and squeezificaciousness. There we go, press that down. This has got grey in it so I'll add a silver eyelet for that one. I like a bit of variety otherwise I could become obsessed and just use the rose gold ones and that wouldn't be any good would it? It's a really relaxing process to start at the beginning with your book pages and to put them together and to see what emerges. Every tag is going to be different every time but I feel they are a beautiful family of botanical tags and the images are just so much fun to play with. So I think I'll add a bit of hessian thread just to pull it all together and each of these can be roughly 
twice the length of the tag. And these are my handmade tags from book pages in a vintage botanical style. Give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this and do subscribe if you'd like to see more, including how I made these little journaling cards from the same book page substrate and paint with these little birds on the front. I think you'd really enjoy having a go at those. I hope to see you soon.